Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about early childhood trauma um, and behavior issues. So this is something that will come up over and over in your foster parenting adoption world if your child has gone through significant trauma. I'll be doing a little bit of reading because I want to make sure I get all the details right for you. So this was a article that we read in one of our support groups. Um, not only do we talk about our cases and giving each other support, but we'll go over different just learning tidbits to kind of help us in our foster parenting. And I found this one super helpful, so I wanted to share it with you. So I'm just going to read something really quick. Early childhood trauma can radically change the way a child's brain experiences a situation. Trauma causes the brain to go survival mode, which triggers the fear response, fight, flight, or freeze. When a traumatized child is in fear response, the brain shuts off the thinking part of the brain and the child cannot think or even recall coping skills. The primitive part of the brain is about the only is about only one thing, survival. And I, if you've had foster kids who have experienced trauma, then I'm sure you can totally relate to that. And you know, you just see, I just think of some of the kids that we've had and when certain triggers would come up and you just see all the, of their logic, I mean, not that little kids are super logical anyway, but all of their logical thinking just goes right out the window and this like look comes over their eyes and they just, you know, they just don't know how to react. A lot of times if they're much younger, like you just see it come out in behaviors, not necessarily in, you know, analyzing that their logical sense is not there anymore. So for example, common sense says, I have sunflower seeds at home. I can wait 20 minutes to get my sunflower seeds. It's okay to just go home and get my sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds won't keep me from feeling hungry. But early childhood trauma says, if I don't get sunflower seeds right now, I will starve to death. So these are just four questions that you can ask yourself if you just feel like a behavior is getting a little bit out of control over something to you seems seemingly small. What's going on in my child's brain? Is it the fear response happening? Was there something, an event, something they saw, something that triggered them possibly? What does he need to feel safe? So in that example, he needs sunflower seeds immediately to feel safe. And why am I as the parent saying no? I'm saying no because common sense says we can wait until we get home. But sometimes that means stopping at the store and getting sunflower seeds for him right away. And you know, a lot of people looking, a lot of people out looking in on the way you parent might think you're coddling this child or you know, you're giving in to their every whim. But when you're parenting a child that's always in this fear response, it's very, very different, very, very different than parenting a child who's had normal, healthy relationships growing up and who hasn't experienced any sort of trauma. For example, in that moment, this, this person says, in that moment, I realized that my child needs is food security. Therefore, my child has to know that I will meet his needs so he won't ever feel that he will go hungry again. A child has to feel safe. My child needed the sunflower seeds to feel safe and calm his brain. Parenting children from hard places is different than the way we were raised. You have to meet your traumatized child's needs, even if it doesn't seem like common sense. So I wanted to just kind of segue that into talking about food. And if you're a new foster parent or you haven't had kids in your home before, food can be a very um, big issue. Um, we didn't experience it with our younger ones. And I, I truly think that's something that doesn't come out till they're at least three, four years old. But if a child has gone hungry, you may see things like food hoarding, food hiding, um, shoveling the food in their, their mouth so fast that they're choking on it, and just, you know, really bad habits of, around food. Stealing food, being like sneaky and hiding food because maybe they were, you know, maybe they took something out of the fridge that they shouldn't have and they were beaten up for it. Or maybe they were left three or four days and were hungry and didn't have food and just didn't have that basic need met. This happens early on in their life, things like this. It triggers a lifelong problem with food. You'll see many food issues and it's going to take patience and it's going to take therapy to help your child to get through this because it truly, it truly is a big issue. So one of our little ones, they would... Like I'd sit them down at the table and they would shovel the food so fast into their mouth and start choking. And I was constantly like, okay, you gotta slow down, you gotta slow down, you're gonna choke on that. One of our other foster children would freak out um, about eating if I wasn't sitting right beside them. They would just stare at me if I was, you know, finishing up preparing dinner and or getting something out of the fridge. Like they would just stare at me like until I sat down and then they would start eating really, really fast. And then if they were having a bad day and they're super in fear response mode, they wouldn't eat at all. They would refuse to eat and it would cause this huge meltdown. And then, you know, it's not like you can be like, okay, you didn't eat your dinner so you don't get a snack later on. Like you really have to just give in to these kids and help them through these eating problems because you have to let them know that there's food always there. 
So I wanted to share a couple things that we do. Obviously, we don't have older foster children right now, but for my daughters as well, I want them to always know that there's food available. So there's a fruit bowl in reach that they can go to. And then we also have a drawer in our fridge that has like cheese strings and yogurts, um, pepperoni sticks, my kids are into pepperoni sticks, cut up veggies, cut up fruit, all at their level. So they know that they can go. They always have to tell me because I don't want to create like overeating problems because my one daughter is hungry all of the time and my other one eats like a bird. So if I just said to my other daughter like, oh yeah, you have free reign, she would just eat us out of house and home and develop and healthy eating habits in that way. So I always say, just let mommy know what you want um, and I'll tell you, but my one daughter can say, I want another snack. I want like, she'll ask for four snacks and then not eat dinner. And obviously she was raised in a normal healthy environment. So she doesn't have the fear response when it comes to eating and she doesn't have eating issues. So I just say, you know, if she's had a piece of fruit and yogurt and we're having dinner in an hour, I just let her know that that's enough of a snack. But for our foster children, if they were hungry, I just let them eat and I let them know it was always available. Um, one of our foster kids, the it broke my heart. The first, first or second day that they were in our home, I was like cleaning up toys or something. And we have like our living room and our kitchen. It's just kind of one big open space. So I was cleaning up toys in the living room and I just kind of heard a bang and they had brought the chair over to the counter and, and they had climbed up to our cabinets and opened it to get a cereal bar out of it. And you know, a child that young should, first of all, should not be climbing up there, but should not think that they have to go and get their own food. And that just really broke my heart and it just, you know, it caused me to do more research on, on food issues and things with foster children. But I know some foster parents that they actually have to lock their pantries or lock their fridges because these kids develop such a, an emotional response to eating that they'll just eat and eat and eat till they feel sick and they can throw, the, they, they can actually throw up and just cause a lot of more eating issues. So you have to control it, but you have to let them know food is always available. Um, the locking up of the pantry and the fridge that's obviously for extreme cases where children are eating to the point where they're feeling sick. But even just having a little bowl with a banana, a granola bar, whatever, some little healthy snacks and having that in their room for them, you know, a healthy amount for each day. So even if you have to go to the point where you're locking up the pantry because you know they'll just eat themselves silly, um, to have a little bowl of snacks in their room, that's another way that you can help. Just saying, okay, this is your snacks. You can eat from these anytime you feel hungry. They're always here. Um, and just things like that, you know, healthy stuff. Cut up some celery and put it in there or, you know, have some berries in there. I just want to encourage you to think about food a little bit differently and just do a little bit more research on it. I'm going to link some articles below about it. I'll link this article as well because I believe it's just a blog or it was, it was posted on Yahoo. Um, but just do what you can to help your child feel safe around food. You know, I heard this story one time of a foster mom and how her foster children came to her was because the six-year-old pulled two kids, put the two younger kids in the stroller and pushed them through the Tim Hortons drive through and asked for food because they had been left alone with no food for days. I don't know exactly how long. But just to think of a little six-year-old doing that to their two younger siblings, put back, you know, you know, talking about the mommy complex and the caring for, that's a whole other video. But, you know, it's just, that just breaks my heart. And that's how they were finally discovered that they, and they came into foster care. Ugh. So just know that it is a very common thing that their needs are not being met. Food is a basic need. It's not being met in one shape or form, whether that's you know, constantly just throwing junk at them and not giving them healthy food, whether that's that, that they have gone starving for days. I mean, I've heard of kids trying to eat kitty litter and dog food and, you know, just anything because they're so hungry and malnourished. And just know that early on this creates problems for the rest of their life. Hope that was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're a foster parent, throw me some thumbs up so I know how many of you are foster parents watching. I know that's a lot of my content here, but, but I also talk about general motherhood stuff, a little bit of mama beauty, parenting, all that good stuff. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today. Um, leave a comment down below if you've had issues with food with foster children. It's really great for the foster care and adoption community to be able to feed off of each other and, you know, different perspectives and different stories help other foster parents. So definitely leave some comments down below. Uh, like if you like this video. Subscribe if you're new here. I'd love to have you. And thank you so much and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!